First Samuel chapter 17 and we'll pick up verse 39. And David girded his sword, would be Saul's sword, upon his armor. And he essayed to go, he went to try, for he had not proved it. He never tried them out, he never worked with that. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off from him. And he took his staff in his hand, that's what he knows, that's a shepherd's staff, and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. Now he looked in that brook and he chose him five of them. Second Samuel twenty one fifteen. Second Samuel twenty one fifteen. Moreover, the Philistines, there they are, had yet war again with Israel again, and David went down his servants with him, and fought against the Philistines, and David waxed faint, he's old, and Ishbanab, which was of the sons of the giant, the giant, first time that word shows up, giant, and the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight, back when 17, 7, and being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. David was thought to be killed. But Abishai, the son of Zariah, succored him, and smote the Philistine, and killed him. Then the men of, men of David swear unto him, saying, Thou shalt, thou shalt go no more out to, uh, thou shalt go no more out with us to battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. You're getting old, Dave. Time for you to stop. You almost lost it this time. And it came to pass after this that there were there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Shabakadai, the Hushanite, slew Saph, which was one of the sons of the giant. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elihan, the son of Jer a Bethlehemite, same area of David, slew the brother of Goliath the Giddite. Now you see that brother? That's removed out of modern Bibles. So when you read the modern Bibles, it would say Elon killed Goliath. Well, my friend, that's what we're going to read in 17, that David killed Goliath. I guess they have a problem with a giant can't have a brother. The brother of Goliath the Giddite. The staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam, like his father. And there was yet a battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature, that had on every hand six fingers, and every foot six toes, four and twenty in number. And he also was born to the giant. When he defiled Israel, Jonathan the son of Shimei, the brother of David slew him. These four that were just mentioned were born to the giant in Gath. So he had four other brothers. So David picks up five stones. Just in case the four brothers show up. Big question, why did David grab the five stones? That's the reason. She chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. And put them in the shepherd's bag. That's one of two times it shows up in the Bible. The shepherd's bag. A uh, shepherd's, excuse me. Isaiah 17, 40. And we'll look at that in a moment. Later on. But that shepherd's only shows up two places in the Bible. Here it's a bag. Which he had. A purse like. A bag. Wear not what pertains to a woman, woman not to wear what pertains to a man. Skirts and bags. Even in a script. Not script. Script. That's the first time that shows up. And his sling. 
was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. So look at all the armament less to what Goliath has. He has a bag, a sling, and he had to pick up five rocks. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. Another person's holding Goliath's shield again. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained. This is the first and the last place it shows up. Only two places again. Job 30, verse 1. Disdained. Disdained him. For he was but a youth and ruddy and a fair countenance. And go, we go back to later on, 16, 12. We've already read that about David. The guy's a man of war, but he still has that youthly feature about him. But he's tough. And he's young. And we'll see earlier, later, I mean, excuse me. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog? Well, yes, you are. <laughs> You're an unclean animal. Remember what Jesus called that woman that was a Gentile? Yeah, you are a dog. That thou comest to me with staves. Now staves are poles. They have a point at the end. There were also staves when they came to take Jesus in the garden and bring him to trial. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. That's another point we'll look at a little bit later. His gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me. Uh, he's really a youth. He's so young. And you're saying, come to me. <clears throat> and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air. And to the beasts of the field. That's no way to treat a youth. And you know what? Your body's going to lay dead on the ground, unburied. And you're going to be food for the animal. That's what he's saying. And the Jews have respect to a burial. So it would be, you're going to die an unrespectable death. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Smith and Wesson. No, absolutely not. I come to you with a magnum. That, that don't work either. I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. Jehovah, the God of the armies of Israel that you've been defiling for 40 days. That's the God. That's the one I'm coming to. Whom thou defiled, person. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. David's a prophet. See that? Because God will do it. So David's a prophet. He's anointed king. He's a king and a prophet already. He just doesn't have the throne yet. The Lord has delivered thee into my hand. And I will smite thee. And take thy head from thee. Prophet. He's going to do it. And I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day. Unto the fowls of the air. And to the wild beasts of the earth. Uh, you think you're going to leave my body out? I'm going to take your body and leave it. <clears throat> well, let them eat you. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. So David is going in the faith that the children of Israel don't have. He's going in the faith of God the Father, God Jehovah. And the victory I'm going to get over you today is going to be God's victory. And all this assembly... Both the Jews and the Philistines shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. Alright. What are you going to do with that? I mean, we know the story that God uses that rock and puts it right in the forehead of, of Goliath and he falls down dead. But, you know, if you're a Christian, you can pick up rocks and you can throw them and scare people away without killing them 
And when you go to the cops, they describe him. He's got bruises all over him. And listen, if you want to be a Christian, carry a gun, that's okay. But if you kill a lost man, and you're not in battle, and you send him off to hell, The only time I see in the Bible that thou shalt not kill is when there's a war. So, and all the assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's. And he will give you in our hands. Oh, well, look what he told us so, saw in verse 33. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistines to fight with them, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And then David goes about and what the Lord has done with him with that lion and bear. Everybody is looking at David the youth, they're not seeing God in this young man. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. Remember that. David's got the faith that the people don't have. And he's giving credit that has not happened to God already. And look, he witnesses to this giant, this Philistine, in battle. It is God's going to get me to bat battle over you, buddy. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose. He was sitting down. And came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang, last, first and last time that word used, and slang it. Now we use the word slang. Uh, slang it. And smote the Philistine in his forehead type of antichrist. He gets a deadly wound in his right eye. And the stone sunk into his forehead. That's the power of God. God drives in that stone right to into his forehead. And remember, he's a giant. He's got more bone mass. And he's got that, that helmet on. And watch this one. You ready? His, he fell upon his face to the earth. Let's go back to chapter 5, verse 3. 1 Samuel 5, 3. The Holy Spirit is so good when he... Don't change the word of God. By the way, when I the Bible study we had our family today with about light, that capital L and the little L, they do change it. Uh, where are they going? 5, 3, and 4. Ready? And when they of Bashan rose early in the morning, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the earth. Where was? Where did the giant fall? Verse 4. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground. Okay, back over here. To the giant. He fell fa his face to the earth. But I'm looking here. Where is it? Uh, I made a mention. Verse 43, the end of the verse. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. You mean Dagon, the one that fell down twice. Now, you would think that the momentum of that stone was through the giant backwards, not forwards. The giant has fallen just like Dagon before God. You say David, David, a type of Jesus Christ, and that giant falls down and hits his face right in the ground. David went with the power of God. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Remember, he refused it. Therefore, David ran and stood upon the Philistine. Gets right on top of that dude. And took his sword. 
Goliath's sword, which will show up later, and drew it out of the sheath thereof. Goliath had even not removed his, his sword. It's still in the sheath. And slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. I thought you guys were supposed to be the servants of Israel. If I, if you if you win, you be our we be your servants. If we win, you be our servants. They took off. They didn't hold up to their agreement. And the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines. Oh yeah, now you get. It. Now you jump on the bandwagon. Until thou come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. That's Philistine area. That's one of the places where they had the, the emeralds. The, and the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Sharam, even unto Gath and unto Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing, first and last time that word shows up, after the Philistines, and they spoiled their tent. So the Philistines left their tents set up. And they just go in there and have a field day. And David took the head of the Philistine. Now can you just see this? David walking around with that Goliath's head. You know, spooking the girls. <laughs> he was young. And brought it to Jerusalem. But he put his armor in his tent. Now it's interesting you don't change the word of God. Verse 40 said, shepherd's bag. And the only other place that you can find that is Isaiah 1740. So let's go over to Isaiah 1740. And let's see the riches of the King James Bible that you're not to mess with. Isaiah 1740. And what I said about today's Bible study, just make a mention about capital L and little L. Well, they took the capital L off 1 John 1, 7 about Jesus. And there's a little L about Satan. Ooh, you're in trouble. And let me get back here. I can't find 17. Let me name. 17. I know I'm having a hard time. 17, what did I say? 40. Uh-oh. There's no 40. I'm in Isaiah 17.4. Well, let me take a look here real quick. I can... That's an error. Ooh. Isaiah 38.12. Oh, that was way off. Oh, you know what? That was 2 Samuel 17. No, I don't know. All right, well, Isaiah 38, 12. It's that error. 38, 12. Oh, you know what? 17, 40 is 1 Samuel. <laughs> 38, 12. My age is departed and has removed from me as a shepherd's tent. So, David takes everything to his tent. He goes back to Bethlehem, and where he has his sheep, there's his housing. There's a shepherd, or he brought his tent with them. But there's a thing called a shepherd's tent, and it's temporal. It goes from place to place to place. He didn't have, the, he didn't have a tent among the armies. He had his own tent. And when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said unto Abner, the captain of the host, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As thy soul liveth, O king, I cannot tell. And the king said, Inquire thou whose son, the stripling, first and last time that word shows up. Stripling is a word according to the 1828 Webster's Dictionary is a child that has reached 
adolescents, or teens. We are given the approximate age of David. And I wonder if the type of Jesus Christ, if it would be a number called 13. Why would you say that? Look at verse 54, Jerusalem. You think his father and mother know where he is right now? He sent them off to the battle. Jesse would have no idea until later on what David just did, didn't he? Kind of interesting. I'm not saying he's 13, but I would guess. All right, so Saul and Abner does not know who David is. But David played before Saul. David stood as the armor bearer of Saul and Joab, I mean, Abner, probably grown, as a person that I am personally that I know, I can know somebody and forget who they are. They just had a big conflict. Maybe they, I don't know. And the king said, inquire whose son this stripling is. And as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. So look at verse 54. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it. They are now in Jerusalem. And David is still carrying that head and he's called before Saul. And, there, and there's Goliath's head right there. Oh no, the God of Israel won. <laughs> Come on, David, stop it. And Saul said, whose son art thou? Thou young man. And David answered, I am the son of thy servant Jesse, the Bethlehemite. What do you get out of that? I get one important point that's missed by all. If David's a type of Jesus Christ, did they know who Jesus Christ was, even though you have a whole Old Testament to prophesy and John the Baptist told you who he was? And the disciples and have been going out proclaiming who he was? They know who completely he was, but they did not know who he was. Another type of Jesus Christ. They're scratching their head. 